Hello everyone, Charles Watts here, the Arsenal correspondent at Goal, joining you on Tuesday. We are edging towards the end of the international break. It's been a good international break for some Arsenal players, which I'll talk about in a minute, but we are edging closer to that big, big game for Arsenal at Anfield on Saturday. Going to be a massive um, indicator, really, and just how far Arsenal have come in this unbeaten run, just how high the confidence is and just how much quality there is in this team. Can they keep out Liverpool at Anfield? Can they take the game to Liverpool at Anfield even and give them a proper good match-up, which we haven't really seen for a long time when Arsenal go to Anfield, let's face it. Um, aside from that, what was it, the 5 all? Um and the nil-nil and the penalty shootout win. So the two League Cup games, basically, when it's come to the league, it's been pretty easy for Liverpool against Arsenal in the last five years or so, I'd say. Um, and, uh, yeah, it'd just be really interesting if Arsenal got up there and give them a proper good game, take the game to them at times, put them under pressure, try and get something from it. Um, and if they can, then I think maybe we'll look at it and think it's, uh, you know, maybe this Arsenal team are the real deal and they could potentially push for a top four spot. So it's going to be a really, really interesting game, that one. Liverpool are suffering with some injury issues ahead of that match, which again, I'll get to uh, later on in this video. But I wanted to first talk about last night and a very big night for Emil Smith-Rowe for Bukai Saka. I mean, for Saka now, it's just becoming the norm, scoring a goal for England like he did last night. But Aaron Ramsdale made his debut, so congratulations to Aaron. His fantastic start to the season continues after that move from Sheffield United to Arsenal. Uh, I'm not sure he'll get an easier night's work in his life than he got last night, but even so, that will it will still be a very special memory for Aaron. I think he made one save. I saw. I don't think he made any others. That one in the um, first half sort of took a bit of a deflection. He got down low, pushed it round for a corner, and then he punched away the corner that came in after that. And I think that was pretty much the only thing he had to do in the entire match. But. He did it, and he did it well, and he kept a clean sheet, um, which you would <laughs> expect him to do against San Marino. But still, really big game for and big night for Aaron Ramsdale, and it just shows where he's come from, really, since he's arrived from Sheffield United and the progress that he's made that he's now in the England team and starting for England. You know, whether that's going to be a long-term thing, we'll have to wait and see. You'd think that Pickford is still Gareth Southgate's number one, but... Aaron Ramsdale can continue in this type of form that he's shown for Arsenal since he's arrived here, then he's going to be putting a hell of a lot of pressure on Jordan Pickford by the time the World Cup comes around. And England, of course, have now qualified for Qatar with that win yesterday. Uh, done and dusted, no need for a playoff or anything like that. So they can sit back now and just wait for the World Cup to roll around next uh, Christmas, next December. Um, and for Smith Rowe, just a fantastic night for him. Obviously, he made his debut um, a couple of days beforehand in the Albania game in the second half and he came on the substitute but last night was his first start for England and he marked that occasion with his first goal first assist as well one goal one assist almost got two assists uh, the goal taken away from Makai Saka in the first half and credited as an own goal Saka's shot deflecting in off the defender and uh, that was a shame because that if had had Saka kept that goal it would have been a Smith Rowe assist for Saka but um uh, yeah, UEFA took it off him, unfortunately. But Smith Rowe did set up Harry Kane, so one Arsenal fan to the other um, for the fourth goal. And then he scored himself in the second half. Really nice goal as well. Lovely ball in from Saka to uh, Tammy Abraham, I think it was, wasn't it, at the near post. He sort of flicked it around the corner to Smith Rowe. Really nice finish from Smith Rowe, that sort of side foot. That we're seeing quite a bit from him now. He scored it against Spurs. He scored it against Leicester. He scored it last night. And you kind of look at Smith Rowe and look at where he was last season it, when he was getting in these good positions. He was snatching at chances a little bit. But you're beginning to see now with Smith Rowe that instead of snatching at chances, he's placing them. He's getting much more confident in front of goal. And now he's scoring plenty of them. You know, he scored plenty for Arsenal this season. I think he's got five in all competitions for Arsenal, four since September. He scored now for England, he scored for England under 21s as well during that time. So the goals are coming for Smith Rowe. And that was always going to happen. You always felt it was going to happen because he's too good a player not to. Um, and if he keeps getting himself into the positions that he does, and then he's just a little bit calmer with his finishing, which he's demonstrating now, then there's no reason for me why Smith Rowe can't score between 10 and 15 goals this season. And that's what Arsenal need. They need him and Saka to chip in, you know, around the 10 goal mark, because it doesn't look like Nicolas Pepe is going to be playing too much 
at the moment um, because let's face it how's he going to get in the team he's not going to get in ahead of Saka and Smith Rowe and Arsenal are going to continue with this sort of 4-4-2 that we're seeing um, at the moment then you're not Pepe is just not going to get too many chances at the moment and one thing with Pepe although he is very very inconsistent he can frustrate at times he does chip in with goals we know that he scored 16 last season um, so if Pepe is not going to score other people need to step up and help out when it comes to the goal when it comes to the goal scorers help and you know helping out Bamiang and Lacazette and you need Smith Rowe and Saka that's the two things or the one thing you kind of looked at both of them last season and thought yeah you've been great but that's what you need to improve on you need to have more impact in the final third you need to score more goals and you need to get more assists and we're certainly seeing that from both of them this season so it's great to see them both on target yesterday really um really good for smith row and you know it's lovely pictures of him there's one great picture of him running off to celebrate after scoring his goal and you can see saka in the background with his fit with his fists clenched just see how happy saka was for him um, so that was a lovely moment and for Aaron Ramsdale as well getting his England cap first England cap just a really good day great to see three players Arsenal players in the England team it's been a long time I think it's been seven years since we saw that um, I think it was 2014 you had Wiltshire, Welbeck and Gibbs I think was in the team for one of the games so it's been seven years since we've had three Arsenal players in a starting 11 for England so it was really good to see um, two of them get on the score sheet and the other one keeping a clean sheet long may that continue congratulations to Emil Smith Rowe, Bukai Saka, and Aaron Ramsdale. Um, just quickly before I move on from that, actually, yeah, I just wanted to. Gareth Southgate said, I thought Emil all week with us was really good and um, he's given us a good amount. His tight control was excellent. He was inventive with his play. He's got to continue what he's doing. Kane saying he's had a fantastic season so far. Great from him to play and get the goal. He's got the quality. The quality is there for sure. He just needs to keep working hard, keep his head down, and I'm sure he's got a great future. One thing you know with Emil Smith-Rowe is that he's going to keep working hard. He's going to keep his head down because that's the type of player he is, just like it's the type of player that Bukaya Saka is. And so when you've got that sort of mentality and you've got the quality that they both have, there's no reason why these two players can't go right to the very top. They're already in that direction anyway. Um, but yeah, really, really exciting and, uh, and very good to see. Um, one of the sort of disappointments for the international break is a real bad looking injury to see a Klasnach. We don't know exactly how bad it is yet with him. Um, but if any of you are watching, like I was on Saturday, the Finland game against um, Bosnia, a terrible challenge from the Finland guy. I can't remember who it was, but he got sent off for it. Klasnach was breaking down the left and just took his ankle out. It, the picture, the sort of freeze frame of it looks horrible. It's like bent underneath him. Really nasty looking challenge. We'll be very lucky if he's got away without a break. Um, we haven't really had any details through yet from Bosnia. Arsenal obviously waiting for him to come back. He's still with Bosnia at the moment. He was pictured yesterday watching them training and he's got a cast on his foot. Um, so, you know, he's obviously not going to play in their second game this week. But that cast on his foot certainly showing signs that, you know, he's already had some sort of treatment over there before coming back from Arsenal. But it looks like a nasty one. I'll be very surprised. And this is just me having you know, seeing the pictures, seeing the incident, seeing how much pain he looked in. But I'd be very surprised if Kalasnach isn't out for a fairly significant amount of time with that injury because it looked like a really nasty one. If he isn't, then he's very, very lucky because it was a horrible tackle. And, um, you know, fingers crossed for him. Obviously, he's not like that much of a key and influential player for Arsenal uh, nowadays, but he's still stepped up when he's needed this season. He's still played when he's needed... Um, and no one wants to see one of, one of your players get injured, even if he's not in and around the team. And it was just such a horrible challenge. And I just hope for Siad that it's not too bad a challenge. And it might have scuppered a move away for, for him in January, in fact, because you know I'm not so I wouldn't have thought Arsenal would have stood in his way if they could have got a decent deal lined up for him, even if it's only on loan till the end of the season when his contract runs out. Um, and he would have gone out and played somewhere. And perhaps this injury, this tackle, is going to rob him of the chance of that, which would be a shame as well. So. Fingers crossed for Siad. Hopefully he won't be out for too long and the injury's not as bad as certainly I'm fearing, judging by the look of it. But um, yeah, it did look like a nasty one. Okay, so Arsenal-Liverpool on Saturday. I think we'll be speaking to Mikel. I haven't had the actual confirmation through from Arsenal yet in terms of when the press conference is this week, but it tends to be two days before the match. And given the matches on Saturday, you'd expect the game, the press conference should be at some point on Thursday. Um and um, yeah, we'll, get, we'll certainly hear from Mikel in terms of the latest team news ahead of that one. But it's not, you know, it's not 
looking too bad for Arsenal. It's certainly looking better for them than perhaps it's looking for Liverpool at the moment because Liverpool have got a fair few issues um, when it comes to injuries. They had another blow last night with Andrew Robertson, which I'll get to. But in terms of Arsenal, it's not looking too bad. I mean, we've spoken about Kaladinac. He's certainly not going to be involved in it. Granit Xhaka continues to work hard to get back to full fitness, but this game's going to come too early for him as well. Thomas Partey's the big one. You know, will Thomas be fit for it? Um, last time I spoke to people who are sort of close to Thomas Partey, they were hoping it was he, he had a chance, but we'll have to wait and see on that one. Obviously, he didn't play for Ghana. That Ghana were hoping he might at least make the second game. That wasn't the case. He stayed at stayed in London for treatment on his injury. Arsenal were kind of hoping that he will be fit for Liverpool to be involved in that one, but it's it's going to be touch and go, so we'll have to wait and see. Mikel, I'm sure, and Arsenal, I'm sure, will provide more of an update on Thursday when it comes to Thomas Partey, but he's going to be the big one for Arsenal. Other than that, and unless people have got injured that we don't know about uh, during the international break or in training, it certainly looks like the main sort of focus when it comes to who might and might not be fit for Arsenal for Anfield. Thomas Partey will be the significant name in that one. In terms of Liverpool, though, I mean, they've got some real issues uh, when it comes to injuries. Andrew Robertson limped off yesterday for Scotland in their win against Denmark uh, with what looked like either a hamstring or a groin or something. Um, and it, it, you know, if it is a hamstring, which people are saying it might be, then you just think there's no chance to play against Arsenal uh, on Saturday. But he was did come back out and walk around the pitch after the game. Um, for Scotland, which some Liverpool fans have taken as a good sign, but still, if there's any doubt when it comes to uh, a hamstring, I'd be surprised if Robertson makes that, and he'll clearly be a big miss for Liverpool because he's such a good player. Tomiskas, or however you pronounce it, has been doing very, very well uh, this season in Robertson's absence, so he'll you know soften the blow a little bit. He's clearly a very good left back uh, in his own right, but um, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think I prefer him than, than Andy Robertson when it comes to lining up against players on. Saturday and you know Jordan Henderson's left the England camp he didn't play in the second game because of an England issue um uh, Sadio Mane as well he's got a um he limped off during the international break I believe um not sure what the injury was but while he was playing for Senegal so that's a problem for them I think it'll be a big big blow for Liverpool if they're without Mane because they looks like they're going to be without Roberto Firmino as well because Firmino's injured um James Milner, Naby Keita, plenty of players here, all big doubts for Liverpool. Um, and, you know, if Arsenal could go up to Anfield and play a significantly weakened Liverpool side, then that would be a big boost for them. I mean, Liverpool's still got plenty of good players and they'll still, no doubt, put out a very strong side against Arsenal. But if you're going to be, if you're going to go up to Anfield, you'd certainly prefer to play a Liverpool side about Mane, Henderson, Robertson, Keita, um, Firmino, all those sort of players. So um, you don't want to say fingers crossed because, you know, it sounds a bit bad because you don't want to wish an injury on anyone. But it would certainly be a, you know, Arsenal would certainly take that if those players are injured. Like I said, we'll have to wait and see what Klopp says. He'll have his press conference probably on Thursday as well. And no doubt he will give much more of an update when it comes to the injury issues Liverpool are facing. But it looks like they're in a slightly worse position than Arsenal as it stands ahead of that big, big game at Anfield on Sunday. All right, everyone, thank you very much for watching today's video. I appreciate your time. As always, do enjoy the rest of your week, and I'll be back to bring you some more Arsenal news as it happens as we get closer to Saturday's trip to Anfield.